Hello and welcome to the CCW Safe podcast. I'm Rob High in Oklahoma City, joined today by Philip Naiman and special guest Rick Travis. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Hi, how you doing there, boss? So, folks, if you've not met Rick Travis before, Rick is the director of development from the California Rifle and Pistol Association. I was lucky enough to have him on my Firing Line radio show today talking about all the things going on in California. And I thought, you know, this is really important because it's not just California. You've heard this before. As California goes, so goes the nation. If you don't believe me, think about how the places where you live in are starting to change. For instance, in Montana, the one little state of Montana with very few people living in it, 100,000 people left the San Francisco Bay Area to move to Montana. What do you think that's going to do to the politics in that area? So this is very important that you hear and don't just shut up and say, oh, my gosh, it's California. They're crazy. Uh, the crazy is coming for you. Yeah. They, they didn't put a border along Arizona, Nevada, and Oregon. So it's leaked out. It is, it is in your local cities now. It's in Texas. It's in, San, uh, it's in Nevada, Arizona. You really need to pay attention. Idaho. Idaho. Idaho's under attack big time. You really need to pay attention to what's going on in your local things. It's not the same game it was 10 years ago, right? Definitely not. So Rick is, is again, the director of development for the California Rifle and Pistol Association. They spend all their time trying to find the cra fight, the craziness that goes on in our state legislature. And uh, you only hear about the ones they lose, but the ones they win are amazing. So so anyway, so here's what we've got going here. Rick, um, tell them about the state of CCW's concealed carry permits in California. Um, yeah, so starting 10 years ago, there weren't many of them offered in the state. We had places like Los Angeles, 13 million people, about 140 CCW's. For 13 million people. For 13 million people. And that was because you had to make a big contribution to the sheriff to get it. Right, and we had <laughs> the same thing in Orange County. Orange County was a pay to play. You know, if you paid $5,000, you got a permit, you got 10,000, you got a deputy reserve deputy badge to go with that permit. Um, and so there was a lot of corruption within it that got shot down. Um, and when that did, CCWs rolled back. The story was that the California Rifle Pistol Association went out and started meeting with sheriffs, started making some great arguments. Um, and as a result, you can take Orange County. It's one of the big success stories. There are almost 30,000 CCWs. Uh, we have counties such as uh, out here in the New Empire, Riverside County, had a, a guy who claimed to be a pro uh, CCW sheriff. And as a result, that uh, sheriff um, is no longer in office. We have uh, Chad Bianco as the sheriff out there, and he's brought his department up to about 28,000 uh, Fresno County. And so now we have 52 different departments that are going to be meeting at a CCW conference that we hold up in Solano County, up near the Bay Area, which makes it fun. And uh, we even have members. And, when, when is that? That comes up the first weekend, uh, first week in March. And uh, you're all going to get to watch Phil about have a heart attack when I tell him, you know, a year ago when I told you LA County was sending some people, you didn't believe it would do anything. Right. And LA County sent their people, we helped get them trained. And uh, now LA County is right around 5,000 CCWs and growing. In one year. In one year, which is a huge increase. And we just got noticed that the San Francisco County Sheriff is sending four people to the conference to learn how to set up a CCW program. Do we know where it's gonna go? No, same thing like I told you, but that's never happened before. So that's movement. It's a good choice, you know, and, and especially in California, because we've had district attorneys and a governor who've let felons out of jail like crazy. I think the grand total under Gavin Newsom is he's early released 70,000 felons. Yep. Not 70,000 Boy Scouts, 70,000 felons. And then we have district attorneys out here like Gascon, mm -hmm. um, who destroyed San Francisco and now he's working on Los Angeles. Uh, not enforcing laws. And so crime is, has had a rampage. I think in the in all the five major democratic cities, it's up like 30, 40 percent for murders year over year. Well, and I think another thing that all of you across the country need to know is, you know, a lot of times in national news when California comes up, it comes up to California is trying to answer all these inherent threats. 
Yet, uh, if you were to look at the armed prohibitive person system we have here in California, which the Department of Justice knows, over 22,000 felons who have illegal firearms in their possession. And we're lucky if we get a half a dozen arrests every year. And now we're adding 70,000 more potentially into that system. And this is why a lot of Californians are saying, no, we want our concealed carry permit just to protect ourselves because with the defunding of law enforcement in California, we also now have, my son's in law enforcement, um, their response times are upwards of 35 minutes now. So again, outrageous. that's crazy. Yeah. And, and so what we're talking about is, you know, I know maybe you live in, in Oklahoma, great state, right? Uh, you have a flood of people. There were 38 million people in California. There's about 35 million now. And that includes an influx of 5 million illegal aliens in the last two years. So there's really only 30. The other 8 million people have left. That's why real estate prices are shooting up in some rural areas like crazy, like you've never seen before. Right. Uh, like we said, 100,000 people escaped San Francisco and went to Montana. Why? Because it's beautiful. They have the money. They can buy what they want there. But they're going to, if you don't watch what's happening in your state legislatures, they're going to change things. And they're going to make it exactly what they came from. So it's important that you understand what's going on and what we're dealing with here and how you need to get involved in your local communities to protect what you have. And I think what you have, and, you know, we have a place in Prescott. I love it. I don't want that to change at all. You know, people go to Texas, they tell me all the time how great it is. They don't want that to change at all. So, you know, you should listen to some of the horror stories of what goes on um, and realize that you fight for your life, you fight for your freedom. You know, we need to fight on the other front to make sure that we're uh, politically aware of what's happening in our local communities and don't say don't say the nra will do it or so and so will do it you know this is our responsibility as citizens sovereign citizens right this is our responsibility we have to stand up and fight this you know i don't want to say that i'm calling you from the future and uh, this is what's happened to your state. I'd rather see everything get straightened out now and stay the way it is. So Rick, why don't you give us a few things of what, what you've seen in uh, that they may be- Yeah, store, st we can just go to storage. I mean, storage is a big issue. Uh, shutting down gun shows is another one. And so we're starting to see, you know, with this recent Remington case, you know, trying to go after, they'll buy up companies as we've discussed before and break them up. Folks, you have to be vigilant, and I would even argue hyper vigilant because we had a lot of people 10 years ago in this state say that will never happen. You know, Orange County, California was considered a Republican stronghold on the Western United States. It is no longer a Republican anything. It is controlled by the Democrats. They did that in a decade. And so I think a lot of people tend to be complacent on our side of the fence and say that'll never happen here, not in my backyard, until it's too late. And let me tell you, to unroot this once it takes hold is difficult because they take over schools. It's cancerous. And, yeah, churches, everything. And so, and they try to, to humiliate people and to not allowing, you know, freedom loving people to be able to meet and just discuss things regardless of our background. So um, it's something that you really have to focus on. You have to focus on bridging the gap between law enforcement, a lot of areas across the country. We appreciate law enforcement, but there is a divide, you know, the, the gun loving communities over here and law enforcement's over there. We wave to each other. But when it comes to legislation, when it comes to public speeches, we're not always there supporting each other. And you have to have the mindset that if they're attacking law enforcement, they're attacking hunting, they're attacking any part of your Second Amendment rights, which back all the rest of your Bill of Rights, you better be standing arm in arm against the opposition. You know, that's an interesting thing. So again, you're saying, well, my state's fine. And it could be, and God bless you. One of the things that we've noticed is if you look at a triangle, okay, and let's say that ownership of a three, 38 special six inch is in the middle, okay? And to the right over this way might be AR-15s are fully automatic. And to the left over this way might be 
uh, detachable box shotguns, right? <laughs> so there's kind of the spectrum of ownership and what's what's considered an okay thing to own, maybe in the middle. What they'll do is they'll take the outside edges and they'll mm -hmm. create a specific law saying that you can't do this, you can't have this firearm, you can't have this pistol, you can't do A, B, C, or D activity. And they try and pick off where the smallest little areas of support are. And the problem that we've seen in California and where we're asking you guys to get involved is to say, hey, look, um, those of us in the middle, okay, maybe I don't own an AR-15. Maybe I don't want that type of shotgun. Um, but I have to realize that it's an attack on the Second Amendment. The attack on the Second Amendment is your right to carry a firearm to defend your family from evil. Okay, so that's that's what our guarantee is. And so we're talking about concealed carry, and that's defending our lives. But you need to focus on a big picture because it's not there are things that happen in the legislative houses. And, you know, I, I saw 15 years ago, people um, say, say from the trap and skeet community uh, didn't really care what was going on with AR-15 because they didn't own one. They didn't want one. They didn't care. It didn't, right. it didn't apply to them. Not in my backyard kind of a thing. Well, now all of a sudden it's applying to them. They can't find ammunition or now maybe all their practice ammunition has to be non-lead. It's just terrible things happen. So, you have to be able to stand with everybody and fight these things. Because if you want to keep your ability to carry a concealed weapon to defend your life, your family, your loved ones, this is the background of what goes on. And so that's why I'm so proud to bring on Rick Travis and just kind of introduce you guys to what he does. If you saw his schedule, you'd be very glad you're not him. He's actually 27 years old. <laughs> you know, one of the things that you just brought up, and I think it, it it resonates with anybody, no matter what part of the country you are, because I've been fortunate enough to travel and meet fellow gun owners in places like Maine and things. One of those issues comes down to ammunition. And we've got to be much more, as I keep saying the word vigilant, vigilant about rhetoric that gets used against us. So, you know, if I sit there and say, oh, my Lord, Phil went down and bought 10,000 rounds of ammunition. What's the arm in a small South American militia? I mean, that sounds like an incredible amount of ammunition to the average person, even in our community. Unless he must I be tell you, yeah, yeah, unless I tell you, oh, that's the scoutmaster buying at 22 ammo to take his troop of 40 <laughs> boys and girls down to go shoot, and they only get 100 rounds apiece. Well, that's nothing. 100 rounds of 22 ammo, that's gone less than a half hour with a kid on a range. <laughs> you know, but to the person out there in the press, it just sounds like this extravagant amount, you know, and then they, they what they do is they'll go to PT and go, well, that person over there, about 50,000 rounds, arming kids, teaching them, who knows where that's going to lead, uh, where it leads is to a sound, well-skilled person that understands what firearms do, understands the rights, and is not going to be the bad person out there. The people that are only taught with video games, and then all of a sudden end up in gangs, have no moral compass, that's where the problem's at. But what they do is they use the rhetoric of just ammo to start shutting things down. I've been sounding this alarm for over 10 years here in California. I've got family in Texas, and I can tell you, Houston, Austin, San Antonio are all changing the wrong direction because that rhetoric is spreading. So all those people that sold their homes here in California and moved that way and said, this is just craziness, guess what they brought with them? That craziness. Unfortunately, right. You know, um... There's a bill actually in the California legislature, which we actually support. I'm not, not going to the dog and cat one. I, okay. they, they'll never, they'll, yeah. yeah. yeah Their minds will go, boom. we can't tell them about the dog and cat yeah. bill. <laughs> but there's a bill in California from an anti gun person who, because of the Alec Baldwin um, situation, has decided that maybe we need to have NRA trained people on movie sets, right? You right. Explain that. Yeah. So basically, what happened is Assemblyman Cortese who's not a friend of our community, is like, hey, you know what? We need to get people well-trained so this never happens again on a movie set. So he's now coming over to our side and asking for us, along with the NRA and, and Gun Owners of California, to be able to provide them with a list of qualified trainers and set up a standard so that everybody on the set, including the actors, have been trained so they know what they're doing and these things don't happen. Yeah, so looking at that, it seems to me like that would be a fantastic thing if we actually had that, oh, I don't know, maybe in our schools. Oh, like we once did. 
<laughs> well, we're, wait, <laughs> when we had when we had rifle training in schools, how many school shootings were there? You know, I'm glad you brought that up. We there's a, a high school in a, I believe it's the Inglewood area. It's called Morningside High. And about three years ago, and I know I've shared this story with you before, Phil, I went out and met with the principal, wonderful African-American man. We went for a walk and he took me and was telling me how he had been a student at Morningside High back before I was even around. And uh, as we walked through the area, there were these post holes and next to the football field. He goes, you know what those are for? And I'm like, nope, never seen those. And he goes, well, when the football team was practicing, that's for our 22 rifle team here at Morningside High practiced and he talked about bringing his rifle in the school bus in LA County to go shoot and I said well what was the result of that he goes we never had a suicide during the time that program was in and yeah there were gangs but there was no violence on the school grounds since they've taken away all that education both those things are in play on a regular yeah. basis yeah. you know you guys you guys have mentioned a couple of things um we get people asking us, members asking us all the time, what are we doing? What are, how are we fighting for this? How are we doing that? <laughs> Our favorite <laughs> question, we never hear that. We'll go to this here in a second, cause I wanna, I wanna get your take on this Rick and see what you guys are doing as well. Um, because the most recent one has asked us to finance a lawsuit on the, on the stuff going on in San Jose. Mm -hmm. um, we, I, I can never stress strongly enough, these are your individual rights and you have to absolutely plug in and be involved at the grassroots level. Speak with your neighbors, speak with your friends, speak with the guys in your fraternal organizations that you're members of, speak with- The uh, water buffaloes. Uh, the people that, yeah. You, you're a member too. Um, speak with you know your friends at church, wherever. Yeah, those are the things you have to plug into and become involved. And it has to be something that everybody is concerned for. You know, we we talked a little bit about the Remington thing, and you know, Phil and I discussed that, you know, privately the other day. And and my thing is, so now suddenly you do the same thing and you take a, a big truck and you ram through a crowd. It, so suddenly GM is responsible. They're on the hook for it. You know, we're, you're really starting to tread on some really, really dangerous grounds there. Um, you know, Rick, you touched on the, the scout troops and, and training those kids up. Mm -hmm. what, you're what you're talking about is responsible gun ownership. Those kids, have to go through all of the safety trainings and things like that so they actually understand what what is in place there the things that that can go wrong and and how to you know i never i never pick up a firearm without the understanding that gun's loaded i, I treat every single firearm as if it's loaded i never point it at anything that i don't have the intent to destroy guns guns are lethal weapons that's what they are um so back to where i was going um i i kind of want to know what what's on you guys plate as far as uh the san jose stuff going on now san jose is just the tip of the iceberg in this state we have a lot of things going on i think that's caught national attention um california rifle pistol association why don't you explain what it is okay so basically what they're, they're trying to come up with is it is illegal for a city to be able to require insurance. Um, they can't do it. It's against state law. It's against federal law. So what the city of San Jose said was, we're going to create a nonprofit that will create an insurance that all gun owners have to buy. And the money from that insurance is going to go pay for allegedly victims issues. Where we're fighting that issue is the city can't they can't create a nonprofit. That is also illegal. And so here's how the city's thinking. They can do it. They can get it passed. And it's going to take five to 10 years to go through the court. And we call it death by a thousand cuts out here because the attitude of our legislature and a lot of the, the major cities that are democratically controlled right now is to just go ahead and do the illegal thing. 
because then you can spend a decade and about a million, million and a half in court fees make them to fight, fight us. Yeah. And so they're just trying to make it a, a game of attrition. And then once they get it locked here in California, and I can go back to a, a bear bill that happened a couple of years back here, it immediately appeared in 22 legislatures the very next year across the country. Mm -hmm. And so that's not a joke when we say to people, what starts in California, it's gonna go across nationwide because this is the testing ground. Well, you know, we've already seen some, some of the places that have absolutely the most stringent, strict, incredible gun laws are the places with the most violence. Mm -hmm. uh, well, take because, a look at it this year. You've seen what, I mean, I saw the numbers last week. I don't have them memorized, but I think the smallest one was only 120% increase in, in murders in some of these cities. And the cities are, are Los Angeles. The cities are Chicago, Baltimore, Seattle, Seattle, yeah. you know, I think it was 140 percent, I think it was yeah. increased. So all of these, these places that have these gun control issues, they don't have murder control. Yeah, so we actually, we actually did a show on those rising crime statistics and, and, you know, you guys touched on it a little bit ago, um, the defund the police thing, and it gets to the point where the pendulum has swung so far that you get guys that, you know, I'll respond to a call, but I'm not going to be proactive. I'm not going to go out and do things. I'm not going to put myself at risk. This is my livelihood. This is what I do to take care of my family. And all of a sudden you are, you know, you're, you're in over your head and, and these guys just go, you know what, I'm, I'm just not doing anything. Um, so, you know, we've, we've teased about it in the past, but it's at a point now in some places in the country that that you need to be prepared to self-rescue. I mean, it it's just come to that in so many areas. We've talked about that um, many, many <laughs> times. You are the first responder. We talked about that on CCW Safe, on the Crime mm -hmm. Line Radio Show with the California Rifle and Pistol Association. Uh, when something happens, you're the one who's there, right? The police are just minutes away on a best case. Uh, here in California, it could be 20 to 30 minutes away. Well, I mean, I had a really good conversation with a couple of people in, in the sheriff's union, and they said, you know, to say this, I'll, I'll say it on, on this, this thing. How many of us over the age of 35, I'll make this really easy, could literally go in and handle a 15 round MMA match or in a physical condition to do it? And the answer is going to be none. And if, even if you're saying, yeah, okay, at two o'clock in the morning, you've been asleep for three hours and you're going to wake up and be ready to do the prize fight. You're not going to be able to do it. That's the length of response time now in many urban areas. And, and the problem is they can't even get people to go to the academy anymore because who wants to be in law enforcement when there's all these hassles and all these negativity coming? And, you know, even in churches, people saying, oh, you and your, your spouse are in law enforcement. Could you please not come to this Bible study? Because you might offend somebody. This is where we've got into, and this is not going to get better because this is a nationwide issue. It's not just a, a California issue. I can speak to what's going on here in our state, but it is a nationwide problem. Yeah. We don't want to be coming to you from your future, right? right? Actually, we are. We're from your future. We want you to change. Change the way things are. Don't let this take root where you are, you know, um, as Ronald Reagan once said, he says, America is the last bastion of freedom. If we lose her, where do we go? And what we're seeing is an onslaught. So we have to be vigilant. You know, you have rights. Rights come with responsibilities. Your responsibility is to be vigilant, to defend your rights and to know them and to be able to articulate them and to stand firm when there's social pressures, you know? You know, you, you just brought up something that reminded me. I just got back from, a, it's called the International Sportsman's Exposition that was up in Northern California. And uh, one of the things, obviously, in development I do is raise funds for cases like the Duncan V. Becerra, which is on the standard capacity magazines across the country now, because we're waiting for it to be heard by Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Yeah. But uh, it was interesting because I was working with two different groups from uh, Africa to set up some possibilities for some hunts. Both of the people pulled me off to the side, along with a couple of members of our staff and said, we are praying for you and watching what's going on in your country and in your state every day. 
because we realize if you as Americans fall, there's no hope for us. And I thought how ironic because when I was growing up, my grandfather was always like, no, don't forget to pray for the people in Africa and Asia. Now they're praying for us, how the tide has turned. You know, um, we should probably point out that this year, uh, the arguments have already been heard. We're waiting on several decisions from the Supreme Court. And now why that's important, these cases started with the California legislature being just their, raisin, their regular crazy bat guano in the head kind of a thing. And they come up with these things and then we have to fight them. Mm-hmm. And so we get a win and then they appeal. Then we get another win and we get an appeal. And now they're at the Supreme Court and you're saying, well, this doesn't affect me. Hey, guys, this is going to be federal law. If they get a uh, if they're able to withhold the 10 round magazine capacity thing, well, that'll be a federal law. And then it'll go to a seven round or a six round or a five round because numbers are just numbers. If they have the CCW, which one is. Uh, um, Anyway, we have a case on there that shall carry, shall issue, may issue. You know, those are all things. Once they're settled in the Supreme Court, we're going to have a real uphill fight. And as far as the court is concerned, there's like four and a half, um, four and a half conservatives on out of nine. We just don't know which way it's going to go anytime. And that's that's really scary. So these things start somewhere. And then, yes, they affect you because they go through all the courts and end up at the Supreme Court. And that could be federal law in Missouri, Florida. Ammunition restrictions would be another one. Yeah. Because we have a pretty draconian system here in California that is very ironic because when you go to buy a new firearm, you go through your 4473 and in other states, you can walk out within a few minutes. In this state, allegedly it takes them 10 days to read the same thing that when you in Arizona it takes 30 seconds, but that's the way it works. But then you go through that same background for a separate fee, which is a tax. Let's be honest about it to decide if you can get your ammunition or not. And if you've moved, you got married, any of those things, that knocks you out of the system and you have to reapply and wait weeks, sometimes months. For an approval to buy ammunition. Right. And we can't buy it over over uh, state lines. You can't have it mail sh- shipped in by mail nope. any longer. The other thing with that is, let's say that I owned a 12 gauge shotgun that I bought in 2010 before the federal government started logging long guns. Whatever mm-hmm. I bought was just considered a long gun on the 4473 form. So state of California doesn't know what I own. I say, hey, I want to buy a case of 12 gauge, go shoot trap. You get denied because you don't have that gun registered with them. These are all little things that happen. And we're not saying that, you know, we're not, don't want you to feel sorry for us. We want to say, hey, this is important that this is what is, is we're up against. This is what's going to be coming your way. And this is why it's so important that you're vigilant and don't let this happen because And now they're trying to cross-reference that to get a bill passed this year that we're fighting strenuous against. They would cross-reference that when you enroll your kid in school to see if all that data matches what you put on the form because they want to know what kids live in homes where the parents have firearms. At least it's not a Fourth Amendment issue. Yeah, not a Fourth Amendment issue at all. (laughs) These are huge things. and, And if you don't think they don't affect you everywhere else across the country. They absolutely do. It, it's absolutely critical to be involved and pay attention yep. and, and be that squeaky wheel. Um, you know, that was something that the silent majority was guilty of for so long is that you let small factions make all this noise and you just laid back and let them do it. And you don't have the right to remain silent anymore if you intend to, to keep your rights, you just don't. Yeah. Um, I, I think you guys have done a wonderful job of, of kind of sounding the alarm. Um, I know some people are going to gonna think, oh my gosh, they're overreacting, but it is what it is, folks. And uh, I'm, I'm encouraged. You know, we have a really large footprint in California. Um, so the fact that you're growing and your, your gun ownership and permits are, are going up uh, is encouraging, but it is a fight. And for you guys, it's an uphill fight right now. So we appreciate what you're doing. 
I want, I want to thank you for letting us uh, come on and uh, again, talk to you from the future. I want to thank Rick Travis okay. here. CRPA.org is their website. If you want yep. to join them and help us. And uh, we've got to relinquish the studio here real quick, but uh, thanks for letting us come out and talk to you folks and get involved. Yeah, thanks guys. Join us next week. And again, you guys can always get directly to me at rob at ccwsafe.com. We appreciate your comments, questions, and concerns. We'll see you next week. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you.